Hello, my friends, and welcome to this week's edition of AMX Weekly, AMX Weekly number 87 now. If you're a regular listener, follower, fan of what I learned this week, you're, gonna, you're going to notice there's a little something different. It's called AMX Weekly, not what I learned this week. Why? Well, Dredd and I are going to put together a Dredd episode here in a little bit and publish it next week to go into the detail. But basically, we're refining, we're building. This whole show is about an evolution of the Spaniard, the evolution of our business, the podcast, etc. So at this point, we're talking, we're moving, we're shaking, we're innovating, we're trying. And we have uh, created a line of essentially learning resources, learning media resources. And this one is AMX Weekly. If you're a listener of AMX, you'll notice I've been calling it AMX Book. So we're just breaking it down. We have a few different threads that we're going with. And this is AMX Weekly. So it is no longer what I learned. What I learned, I really appreciated you. Here's a little bit of background, too, with the show. Started out as Excellence Blueprints. And then it went to Bold Blueprints. And then it went to what I learned this week. And now, currently, we're sitting at AMX Weekly. So I don't know where it's going to go, but I can tell you that this is where we're at right now. Let's hop into the week's content. Again, pulling a point from each day, putting them into a PDF, summarizing the week. So this is like third or fourth level learning. If you want to learn anything truly to let it saturate in your mind, in your brain, to help it become part of your fabric, it's repetition. It's daily repetition over and over and over again. AMX Weekly is a further implementation of that repetition. So the first bullet point I want to talk about, talking about Mr. Rogers, The Good Neighbor. Now, I finished this book this past week. It was a tremendous book, one of my favorite books that I have read. And Facebook Live, Facebook Live, what I'm going to do right now is start over because it messed up. So you're going to hear me say the same thing that I just said. Actually, it probably won't be the same thing because I just kind of riff and go with it. So I guess what we're going to do here is uh, we're just going to rock and roll with it. How about that? How about we're just going to start over and rock and roll with it? And hopefully the darn recorder doesn't mess up again. One, two, three, go. Hello, my friends. Welcome to another episode. It's another weekly episode. But it's not called what I learned this week because we switched it. We did a little switcheroo. We're now calling it AMX Weekly. Why? Because Dredd and I have been doing a lot of work, consulting with a lot of smart people, and we're always trying to grow and innovate. So we have segmented the show, which we're actually going to put out a Dredd episode here in the next couple of days, so I won't go too far into it. But AMX is now called AMX Books. What I learned this week is now called AMX Weekly. And we have a couple other threads that Dredd and I are going to go into and why exactly we're doing that. But remember, this show, it's a show of content and value and knowledge, etc. Interviews, all kinds of cool stuff. But it's also uh, a documentation of me building a business, of the Spaniard and Dredd building a business together, learning all these different things. So we... Uh, we go through all kinds of stuff. <laughs> you know, At first, it was called the Excellence Blueprint. And then it was the Bold Blueprint. And then it was called What I Learned This Week. And now we're sitting at AMX Weekly. So it, it what it is... It is, it, is, it is a curation of the week's learning points, right? So it's summarizing all the things I've learned into one 20-ish minute episode. So that's what you're getting. The thing's the same. The name's a little different. Let's hop into the first bullet point. So I just I finished the book, The Good Neighbor by Maxwell King, about Fred Rogers, the life and work of Fred Rogers. This book was as special to me as any book I've ever read. Tremendously... Touch home for a variety of ways, but one, because of what Mr. Rogers built, how he built it. You know, I just started another book today called The, the Boys in the Boat, and it's about a rowing team, the 1936, going for the Olympic gold medal. And it's like this theme of work, like hard work, and what that adds to your soul and to your fabric as a human being, and the, 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 the truth of the fact that you are responsible for yourself, the truth of success principle number one, take 100% responsibility for your life. Mr. Rogers knew what he wanted to create, and he wouldn't take no for an answer, even when people told him that no, 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 he wouldn't take no for an answer. So he, he achieved what he achieved. You know him, I know him. My kids are watching Daniel Tiger, and there's some other uh, cartoons that are reincarnations of Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood. But one of the coolest things I took from, from this day's reading was this. And this is from AMX 611. He treated everyone the same. From the president of PBS to the doorman at his apartment building in New York to the little girl who stopped him on the street to get his autograph. He treated everyone the same. As a human being, 
This is one of the coolest things I think that you can do. All right, no matter if you're that famous person or you're not that famous person, approaching a famous person or an intimidating person, doesn't matter if fame's involved really or not, but that person of stature, that person of maybe not stature, the opportunity you have to treat everyone the same. This is one of the things that my parents instilled in me since I was a boy. It's one of the things that I'm instilling in my kids, Grace and Rocky, as they're five and two, is that you treat everyone, treat everyone the same and you extend your hand to the kids who are sitting alone, to the kids who don't have anyone to talk to. You extend your hands to them because that's the beauty of being a human being and that's the impact that you can have on other people. So Mr. Rogers treated everyone the same. And I actually just got a message this morning. So you heard me talk about Corey Geishauser, if you've been following the show. He's a former guest on the show. He worked with intern and was friends with Mr. Rogers for, for uh, 20 years. So Corey connected me with another guy, Mike, that I was talking to today who also interacted with Mr. Rogers. If you saw me post a song on my social media, facebook.com slash Charlie Spaniard, it's Mike who wrote the song. And he told me a, a personal story about when he met him. He met him, kind of a, a general exchange. He said, five years later, I saw him and he said, hey, Mike, how are you? He said, I was astounded that he knew my name. So this is reading from a book and then actually having acquaintances, friends that I know and from my town that I can talk to who said, no, he really was that way. So I think it's an admirable, uh, idealistic view of how we should be. I've met some world famous people. I've fought world famous people. And the coolest thing in the world is when they are nice and kind and cool. Mark Merrow, who's a former WWE superstar, he's one of the kindest human beings I've ever met. And it's such a special thing. It's such a special gift that you have to treat others with empathy and respect and kindness and, 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 and fairness, just as Mr. Rogers taught us, just as he did in his daily life. So to me, it's, just, it's one of the coolest dynamics that exists in humans, that no matter title, your title, their title, anyone's title, to treat everyone the same with kindness and respect. So let's segue into the next bullet point. So all this learning that we're talking about on Amex Weekly and Amex Books and Amex Talks and, and Amex Kids, it's all about learning. And I play devil's advocate and I say, okay, Charlie, why does anyone care? Why should anyone care? If someone said to me, why should I care what you learned this week? Why should I listen to Amex Weekly? What's it even matter? How's it helping to push my needle forward? How's it helping me to get towards my goals? I don't just want to listen to a talking head. I want to get something out of it. This is why. Okay, I can tell you in my words, but I'm just 37-year-old Spaniard who had relative success. You might not want to listen to me, but you should listen to Mr. Rogers. And this is what he says. Quote, I'll never forget the sense of wholeness I felt when I finally realized what I was. The directions weren't written in invisible ink on the back of my diploma. They came ever so slowly for me and ever so firmly I trusted that they would emerge. That, my friends, comes to you. Figuring out what you really are, figuring out who you really are, figuring out what you stand for, the values and the principles and the actions and the beliefs that you will take on a daily basis. If you, have, if you want that, I'm telling you from firsthand experience, from the experience of Mr. Rogers, the way you get there is by learning. I can't tell you on a regular basis how often my wife says to me, wow, that's really nice of you. Wow, that's new. That, And I'm not patting myself on the back. I'm simply saying reading gives you perspective. Well, my wife says a lot of other things that aren't, wow, that's great too. So I want to put that out there as well. But reading gives you perspective. It gives you awareness. It gives you insight, how you react to those people around you, your emotions in general, your leadership, your communication skills, your posture as a human being, the energy that you give off how you help or don't help people, how selfless or selfish you are. All of these things slowly, slowly, slowly come to you and you become a more complete human being. And the way you do that is you commit to a life of learning. Whether that means listen to Amex books every day, whether that means listen to Amex weekly once a week or Amex kids or Amex talks, or whether that simply means taking it on yourself and reading books, there are so many books out there about so many different things that they will help you. Podcasts, use them, folks. So this week's AMX Kids, I tell you what, I truthfully don't remember 
if I read Where the Red Fern Grows when I was a kid or not, I certainly remember the book. I remember the cover. I remember the, when I say I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm fighting for the ideal, right? I'm, I'm shooting for the ideal. That, that, that's my view. That's my point, right? I want to be the ideal father, the ideal husband, the ideal teacher, the ideal speaker, etc. So the, I remember the image of where the red fern grows, striking my soul, right? This boy and dogs on the cover, out in a field. I believe it's sunset. They're running. That was special to me. But I don't remember reading the book. So now I'm reading the book. Now, kids' books aren't just for kids. They're for us, too. They're for grown-ups, too, because they're, they're full of life lessons, but they're teaching the life lessons from a kid perspective. But those life lessons are universal. They're the same ones that you and I follow today. And I'm not kidding. When I was reading Where the Red Fern Grows, my jaw literally dropped. My jaw dropped when I was reading this book. And it, 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 I, I, it literally dropped. And I couldn't, uh, it, it was a, a big eyeballs. Oh my gosh. So these, it, it's like, it's an adventure. It's surprise. It's, it's excitement. Books bring tears to my eyes. I was reading The Boys in the Boat today. There were a couple lines where I actually started crying. I was sitting at Panera and I started getting teary-eyed. It's just a beautiful thing. It's a wonderful adventure, all from the comfort of your own home. And I'm going to get, or Panera, and I'm going to start, I'm going to talk about the other, the other book I, I started reading this week called Unplugged. But it also, in, in Unplugged, we're going to talk about awareness and consciousness, etc. But reading also forces you to sl slow down. You can't do it on the go. If you listen, yeah, you can do it on the go. But the, one of the reasons I don't listen to audiobooks, well, one, because I'm obsessive and I need to take notes and I need to rewind, etc. So I just more trouble than it's worth. But really, it's I, I love the act, the action of sitting down at a table or on a couch, getting a pen out, and the act of doing it because I, I'm forcing myself, forcing myself to be all in. I'm forcing myself to focus and be present and be aware of what I'm reading on the page. So it's for me, it's like a, a form of discipline that just gets reinforced every day. Add to it the excitement and the freaking adventure every single day that I get to experience in the insight and perspective and know-how. It's like a win, 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 win times a million, folks. So tune in. AMX Kids comes out every Tuesday, 4 p.m., new episodes. Now let's dive into Unplug, the book I was recently talking about that has to do with using technology effectively, right? Not totally throw it in the trash can, not totally putting it over there with baby, but just using it effectively, not becoming a prisoner of your technology, of your, mainly they're talking about wearables and watchables, the, the tech that you use to gauge how fit you are or how well you're performing says this, quote, we're at the dawn of a new age in which physical exertion is almost completely removed from our daily lives. Our phones, watchables, and wearables promise insight, knowledge, and freedom. But what they really deliver is information overload, confusion, and servitude. How about that? That is a one-two punch right in the gut, my friends. Information overload, confusion, and servitude, meaning there's just way too much coming at you. You're confused because you don't know what to process nor what it means. Servitude meaning you keep checking it, right? How often do we check, check, check? I believe, I heard on a podcast that we check our phones or like we touch our phones 20, it was like 2,000 times a day. It was something like that, something crazy like that. Start paying attention to it. Become aware of how often, how much of a prisoner you are to your tech. I, I, I prefer wearing a Timex Iron Man watch Okay. Now, granted, it's different. If you're a professional athlete, or you're you're trying to win a state title, and you're high tech, th th there's a little there's some difference there, right? So I'm not I'm not gonna whatever. Put it this way: one of the last questions in the book is, "Are you Rocky or Drago?" I am Rocky through and through. That's my mindset. That's what I love to do. And in the book, it does a great job of painting that picture as just being better for you as a being. Right, kind of detaching and just being, not forgetting, not being tied to the number or the stat or the etc. Because one of the things they talk about confusion and servitude. How many of you who have your 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 Nike watch, the name of the Fitbit? How many of you have been laying in bed and either while you're in bed start moving your legs as if you're walking, or get out of your bed and start walking in place? How many? I know, I know. People do that because I've seen people do that. 
This book is about detaching from that, having a point, a purpose, a sense of accomplishment to what you're doing. So I, I love whenever themes of books kind of transfer this book to that book to that book. I talked about Mr. Rogers and the work, right? Just the, the work uh, uh, going and going and going. AMX Kids, Billy, our main character, his grandpa, last week I talked about, er, during this past episode, I talked about his grandfather saying, I feel like cutting down a big tree is something every young boy should do in his life because it adds something to him, okay? So there's like work, work, and then I'm reading this book, The Boys in the Boat. You wouldn't believe, I'm only 70 pages out of 400 pages in. You wouldn't believe. I mean, this is talking about the early 1900s, gets into the Depression, but the work, walking, and this is not anecdotal, this is real. I mean, it's anecdotal, but it's true. Walking two and a half miles to school, going through classes, going to, to rowing practice, walking two and a half miles home, going to the YMCA to work after the YMCA, going somewhere else to work, getting up and doing it all the next day. That adds something to your soul and to your fabric. And with the opening of this bullet point, we're at the dawn of a new age in which physical exertion is almost completely removed from our daily lives. That is death. That is a slow death. That is not what you and I are meant to be and meant to do. I've been for, I was fortunate that I fell into the sport of wrestling and have been addicted to discipline and, 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 and hard work and sacrifice and pushing myself, mind and body since I was eight. I was fortunate and I was gifted, but it's not late, too late for you if you haven't. Simply get up and start walking. Take that first step. And listen to this. I know, I know this is true as well because, again, I'm doing it. Listen to these stats. 79% of people who used a popular device felt pressured to reach their daily targets, with 59% saying it controlled their daily routines, and 39% viewing it as their enemy. 79% felt pressure to reach their daily targets. The steps or the whatevers, the whatevers. Look, when it, a, a funny, this is funny, it's kind of off, off, a little bit off the subject here. My brother and I, my brother Ben and I, we're close. We train a lot together, etc. He's a little bit more, a little bit more, not totally much more. But for example, he'll have his Garmin on. And if we run like 3.89 miles, he'll have to cap off that four. <laughs> and this, this really this doesn't have to do what I'm talking about. But to me, it's fine. It's like, no, nah, man, I ran 3.89 miles. It's fine. But to him, he just can't believe that I can just stop before I get to that fourth mile. Anyhow, sidebar there. 79% felt pressure to reach their targets, 59% saying it controlled their daily routines, and 39% viewing it as their enemy. Something we're voluntarily exposing ourselves to is your enemy. Why do it, folks? Why become a prisoner of it? It's like we're breeding negativity upon ourselves. Now, I put this out. This is, this is in line, okay? It's in line with the negativity, not necessarily dealing with stats here, but... So I want to... I put out a post last week about this idea of of how I assess myself all right there's there's people that I aspire to be like you know I aspire to represent or embody characteristics of that person and there's a learning curve there's certainly a learning curve because you might see person x and say I want to be like person x and then when you really like study and study and study person x you're like oh well I guess I, I still want to be kind of like them and not totally like them. So it is a constant molding and evolution of yourself. But it's important to maintain, this is what I say, it's important to maintain your values throughout that process. But whenever you're assessing, okay, it's really easy to fall into the comparing. What do I mean by that? So when I, when I assess myself, I was thinking about this. When I assess myself, how hard I'm working, how disciplined I am, how much of myself I'm getting out of myself. I reflect on Frankie Edgar, Jocko Willink, and The Rock. Those are three people that I align with, I value, I respect, I want to be like. So I assess myself. But, but what happens is that assessment turns into comparison and then tying it to these stats, that comparison turns into negativity. Because I say to myself, I'm going to use a little bit of a profane word here. If the alarm went off and I wanted to stay in bed, I would hear, oh, I'll keep the profanity non-existent. Get up, wuss. Get up, wimp. Jocko wouldn't sleep. Get up, wimp. Get up now. Come on, man. And it would just be negativity. I'd be like my enemy versus my best friend. So I started to have to realize 
And I actually realized really quick with Frankie when, when I was fighting and, and I would shadow him and travel up and down New Jersey with him and, and, and it basically be like his shadow for days or however often I could, I quickly learned I cannot keep up with this. I just can't do it. I cannot keep up with this guy. I can take from him and kind of do what I can do with it. Jocko's the same way with sleeping. In the rock, he's so far detached from me that I have no idea. I have no idea. But I hope one day to sit across from him, have a conversation with him, and ask him how he does it. And I'll probably... T it's like the Bruce Lee. I wish I had that quote right in front of me. If anyone on Facebook Live has it, can can uh, Google it. Google it quick. Uh, the, the Bruce Lee quote where you take what's useful, discard the rest, and make it your own. Something along those lines. That's essentially what you do. You kind of consume it. You discard what isn't useful. You keep what's useful and you make it your own. So that that be careful when you're assessing. Don't let it turn into comparing. Realize that you are you. <laughs> Tying this back to Mr. Rogers. And we like you just the way you are. Moving on to the interview this week. This was with Charlie Ellison who works for the Travis Mannion or works with the Travis Mannion Foundation. So the Travis Mannion Foundation is a tremendous veteran organization that works to they do a lot of things. They they help to they help to improve uh, uh, veterans' lives, but they also work, they have a really strong youth program, a really strong youth program that they focus heavily on character development. So I had Charlie Ellison on the show. I went to a, a, an event in Comcast at the Comcast Center in Philadelphia. It was part of the Team Red, White, and Blue Old Glory Relay as it went through Philadelphia. And I was I got hooked up to be able to attend and interview some of the speakers on the panel and some of the guests by way of Patrick Murphy, friend of mine, former Undersecretary of the Army. So I got to sit in on this panel, and it was a room full of veterans and families, and I, I suppose like me, there were some non-veterans. But I tell you what's, I don't even know the appropriate word. I'm going to say neat. I'm going to say humbling. I'm going to say extremely insightful. I'm going to say valuable. Those are the words that I'm thinking to be able to sit on this inner circle of veterans and just listen, right? Just go there and listen. So one of the things, Charlie was up on the, the panel and he just has such a commanding, this is episode number 205, it came out on Thursday. He just has such a commanding presence, such a, an energy about him, a, a real deep thundering voice. And a, a, he's a, a solid guy. He just captivate, he captivates you, the room. So I heard him talk and I thought, I absolutely want to interview that guy. So during our, our talk, during the interview that you'll hear on Thursday, episode number 205, this uh, one of the things that came up was on how to ask a veteran about their background. So here's the deal. Here's, I like learning. And I, I don't want to say I like uncomfortable situations, but I value uncomfortable situations because they teach you the most, right? Fighting Rumble Johnson and Hendricks and all those guys. It teaches you a lot about yourself, okay? So I appreciate those moments. Dredd refers to some of the books I read and them being really challenging books. And he says, I, I love when you do that the most. I love when you try to learn and process these difficult books because that's the most valuable learning, okay? So in my opinion, you learn the most from you know difficult or uncomfortable situations. So I've had guests on the show that have had diseases, that I didn't know how to address. I've had guests on the show whose children have diseases that I didn't know how to address. I've worked with people whom I didn't know how to properly address. And along those lines, it came up in the interview on how to ask a veteran about their background. Because if you're anything like me, you've thought, what should I say? Should I say anything? Should I say something? Should I say thank you for your service? I don't really know what to say. And so this came up on the interview with Charlie and he had this to say, quote, number one, just ask some basic questions. Oh, you have a military background? What was your job? What did you do? What was your day to day like? Number two, there's this stigma that I think Hollywood perpetuates that all veterans are inherently broken. But the overwhelming majority of military people are professionals and well adjusted. Don't perpetuate those stereotypes. So like I said, if you're like me, you've wondered what is the proper, the right thing to say. The truth is they're people. Talk to them like they're people. And the truth, truth of it is, if you're honest and pure and come with open arms, people will respect that. You may say the wrong thing, 
But if you do it in an honest attempt to be kind and, and, and kind and friendly, that's, that's like the only, that's the most secure, I believe, the most secure, you can never assure yourself that you're not going to offend someone, but that's the, the, the most uh, confident I feel when I approach someone is just to be honest, just to spell out, I feel really uncomfortable, I don't really know exactly what to say, but I'd like to know about you. Boom. There you go. No perfect way. Can't guarantee the response, but that's the honest approach I recommend taking. Hopping back to unplugged. Quote, this is another, another real life connection. I'm going to read this quote. Quote, the more you pay attention to what your body is perceiving in the world around you, the more sensitive you will become. The more you pay attention to the world, to what your body is perceiving around you, the more sensitive you will become. Segue this to a conversation I had with Rob. Rob is a guy that we're working with, and he was talking to me. About, I was asking him about hunting. He was talking to me about hunting, and it got into. I said, "When do you go?" And he said, well, "I go here, I go there." He said, "Sometimes I go. I'll, I'll sit sit out in the tree uh, about an hour before daybreak." And he said, "There's just." He had no idea I'm reading this book. No idea that I had this down in my notes. He said, "There's something about sitting in a tree an hour before the sun comes up. Can't see anything, but you can hear stuff." And you start to realize things and you start to become aware of things that you never knew or you, you didn't hear or see or smell before or sense before. Granted, this human in real life was speaking directly to the book that I was, that I was reading. So that's further reinforcement, encouragement that the things you're going to learn in your book are going to apply to your lives because the things you're going to learn in the book come from other people's lives and we have the gift of learning through these books. Thank you all so much for tuning in. This has been AMX Weekly number 87. AMX Weekly comes out every Saturday on The Spaniard Show. Search us out on iTunes or whatever podcast app you have and be sure to catch AMX Books every Monday through Friday. AMX Kids, where I'm reading and studying kids' books and talking about them. AMX Talks on Thursdays, which are either interviews or conversations or dread episodes where we dive deep into this content. And I will say, I just got contacted Dr. Andy Galpin, one of the authors of Unplugged, and he said, yeah, I'd love to be on your show. So look for him coming soon. Be bold, folks. I'll see you uh, Monday with AMX Books. See ya. Okay. Hey, Chad, it felt good. It felt good to say on Tuesdays. Where am I at? AMX Weekly 87. Um, felt good to say AMX Kids, AMX Books, AMX Talks, AMX Weekly. Just boom, 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 boom. Bada bum, boom, bing, bang, boom. Now, folks, <clears throat> Dread and I are actually going to record a Dread episode. But I don't know how. I don't know how to record a dread episode so that you can hear what he's saying and don't have to just listen to me, because then it would just be a one one way conversation. I don't know how to do that. I'm gonna think on it, so maybe we can do it in the future. But anywho, ski, that's it. Remember, all these videos are gonna be input input uploaded to YouTube. YouTube.com slash Charlie Spaniard. I'll see you.